Have you ever wondered what powers those sleek smartphones and powerful laptops? The answer lies in a tiny chip, the heart of every computer. It's called a silicon chip, and it's a marvel of modern engineering. These chips are like miniature cities, bustling with activity invisible to the naked eye. Imagine a city where every building is meticulously planned and interconnected. That's a silicon chip, a complex network of billions of transistors etched onto a thin slice of silicon. Silicon, a common element found in sand, is the material of choice for these chips. Why silicon? Because it's a semiconductor, meaning it can conduct electricity under certain conditions. This unique property allows us to control the flow of electricity, creating the ones and zeros that make up the language of computers. So, the next time you hold a smartphone or use a laptop, remember the tiny silicon chip at its core. It's a testament to human ingenuity, a world in miniature powering our digital lives. The journey from ordinary sand to a powerful microchip is an incredible feat of engineering. It's a process that transforms one of the most abundant materials on Earth into the brains of modern technology. It all starts with silicon extracted from sand and purified to an astonishing 99.9999% purity. This level of purity is crucial because even the smallest impurity can affect the performance of the final microchip. This ultra-pure silicon forms the base for building the intricate structures of a microchip. The silicon is the canvas upon which the microchip's complex circuitry will be crafted. The purified silicon is then melted and grown into cylindrical crystals. This process, known as the Chakrowski method, involves slowly pulling a seed crystal from the molten silicon to form a large, single crystal ingot. These crystals are sliced into thin wafers, each wafer destined to become hundreds or even thousands of individual chips. The slicing must be incredibly precise to ensure uniform thickness and smooth surfaces. The wafers undergo a series of complex processes, including photolithography and etching, to create the intricate patterns of transistors and circuits. Photolithography is akin to printing, where light is used to transfer a pattern onto the wafer. Think of it like developing a photograph. Just as a photo is developed from a negative, the microchip's patterns are developed from a mask. A light-sensitive material is exposed to ultraviolet light through a mask. This mask contains the blueprint of the microchip's circuitry. This process creates the intricate patterns of the chip circuitry on the wafer. The precision of this step is critical as it defines the pathways for electrical signals. Chemicals then etch away the exposed areas, leaving behind the desired patterns. This etching process is repeated multiple times to build up the layers of the microchip. The process is repeated multiple times, layer upon layer, to build up the complex three-dimensional structure of the chip. Each layer adds new functionality and complexity to the microchip. It's like building a skyscraper, one meticulously planned floor at a time. Each layer must align perfectly with the previous ones to ensure the microchip functions correctly. After the layers are built, the microchips undergo rigorous testing and inspection to ensure they meet the required standards. Only the chips that pass these stringent tests are packaged and sent out to power the devices we use every day. From smartphones to supercomputers, these tiny marvels of engineering are at the heart of our digital world, enabling the technology that drives our modern lives. At the heart of every silicon chip are transistors, tiny electrical switches that control the flow of electricity. These microscopic gatekeepers are the building blocks of the digital world, translating our commands into the language computers understand, ones and zeros. Imagine a light switch. When you flip it on, the circuit is closed and electricity flows, turning on the light. When you flip it off, the circuit is broken and the light goes out. Transistors work in a similar way, acting as tiny switches that can be turned on or off, representing the ones and zeros of binary code. These transistors are incredibly small, with billions of them packed onto a single chip. The more transistors on a chip, the more powerful the chip becomes. It's like having more workers in a factory, each worker contributing to the overall output. Transistors are the workhorses of the digital age, tirelessly processing information at lightning speed. They are the foundation of modern computing, enabling everything from smartphones to supercomputers. Section 4, Building Blocks of Thought, Logic Gates and the Power of Circuits. In this section, 
We delve into the fascinating world of logic gates and how they form the foundation of all digital circuits. Transistors, working together in groups, form logic gates, the basic building blocks of digital circuits. These tiny switches can be turned on or off, representing the binary states of 1 and 0. These logic gates perform simple logical operations like AND, ORGAN, and NOT, manipulating the 1s and zeros of binary code. Each type of gate has a unique function, allowing for various combinations and operations. Think of logic gates as simple decision makers. They take in one or more binary inputs and produce a single binary output based on their type and configuration. An AND gate, for example, only outputs a 1 if both of its inputs are 1. This means it requires all conditions to be true for a positive result. An OR gate outputs a 1 if either one or both of its inputs are 1. It's like saying, if any of these conditions are true, the result is true. By combining these simple logic gates in different ways, we can create complex circuits that perform sophisticated computations. These combinations can be as simple as a few gates or as complex as millions of gates working together. These circuits are like intricate networks of roads, directing the flow of information within the chip. Each path is carefully designed to ensure data moves efficiently from one point to another. Just like a well-designed transportation system keeps a city moving smoothly, well-designed circuits ensure the efficient processing of information within a computer. The layout and connections of these circuits are crucial for optimal performance. From simple calculations to complex algorithms, everything a computer does boils down to the manipulation of ones and zeros by logic gates within its circuits. This binary manipulation is the essence of all digital computing. It's a testament to the power of simple building blocks working together to achieve remarkable feats. The synergy of these basic components allows for the creation of advanced technologies that drive our modern world. From the earliest computers, which used thousands of individual transistors, to today's supercomputers with billions of transistors, the evolution of logic gates and circuits has been extraordinary. This progress has enabled the development of faster, more efficient, and more powerful computing systems. As we look to the future, the role of logic gates and circuits will continue to be pivotal. They will drive innovations in artificial intelligence, robotics, and beyond, shaping the next generation of technology. Understanding the fundamental principles of logic gates and circuits gives us insight into the incredible complexity and potential of the digital world. It all starts with these tiny yet powerful building blocks. Section 5. The Brain of the Operation. Unveiling the Secrets of the CPU. The CPU, or Central Processing Unit, is the brain of a computer, responsible for executing instructions and performing calculations. It's a complex circuit, built from millions or even billions of transistors, all working together at lightning speed. The CPU fetches instructions from memory, decodes them, and then executes them one by one. It performs arithmetic and logical operations, controls the flow of data, and communicates with other components of the computer. Think of the CPU as the conductor of an orchestra. It interprets the musical score, which represents the instructions, and directs the musicians, which represent the other components of the computer, to produce the desired music, which represents the output of the computer. The CPU's speed is measured in gigahertz, with each gigahertz representing billions of cycles per second. The higher the clock speed, the faster the CPU can process information, making your computer feel more responsive and capable of handling demanding tasks. Section 6. Remembering it all, how computers store information. In this section, we will delve into the fascinating world of computer memory and storage, exploring how these essential components work together to keep your data safe and accessible. Computers need a place to store information both temporarily and permanently. This is crucial for the smooth operation of any computer system, whether it's a personal laptop or a powerful server. That's where memory comes in. Memory is the backbone of a computer's ability to process and store data efficiently. There are two main types of memory in a computer, RAM and storage. Each serves a unique purpose and is vital for different aspects of computing. RAM, or random access memory, is like the computer's short-term memory. It is used to store data that the CPU needs to access quickly. It stores data that the CPU is actively using, allowing for quick access and retrieval. This makes tasks like running applications and processing data much faster. RAM is volatile. 
meaning that its contents are lost when the computer is powered off. This is why you lose unsaved work if your computer shuts down unexpectedly. Storage, on the other hand, is like the computer's long-term memory. It retains information even when the computer is turned off, ensuring that your data is safe and accessible whenever you need it. It's used to store files, programs, and other data that you want to keep even when the computer is turned off. This includes everything from your operating system to personal documents and media files. Storage can be in the form of hard drives, SSDs, solid state drives, or flash drives. Each type of storage has its own advantages and is suited for different needs. Think of RAM as a whiteboard where you can quickly jot down notes and erase them when you're done. It's perfect for temporary tasks that require fast access. Storage is more like a filing cabinet where you store documents and other important items for future reference. It's designed to keep your data safe and organized over the long term. Together, RAM and storage provide a computer with the ability to remember information, both in the short term and the long term, enabling it to perform its tasks efficiently and store your valuable data. Without these crucial components, modern computing as we know it would not be possible. They work in harmony to ensure that your computer runs smoothly, quickly, and reliably, making your digital life easier and more productive.